So another thing I wanted to share with you was is the huge evidence we now have that the very best times for your brain are when you're struggling um, and when you're making mistakes. And this study conducted by Jason Moser and his colleagues, they had people doing tests under MRI scans. They found every time they made a mistake, synapses fired in the brain, great brain activity leading to strengthening of the brain. When they got questions right, that didn't happen. And actually, the time when we're making mistakes is a very good time for the brain, which is a really important message for students. They also found this in this study. They found these, these images, the orange brain is, these were actual voltage maps from the study showing activity in the brain. And the orange brain is people with a growth mindset. Their brains are almost on fire when they make a mistake. But the people with a fixed mindset, much less activity. So this tells us something very clear which is that what you believe about yourself, what you believe about your own potential, actually changes how your brain works. And that's why we see those graphs that I showed earlier of students with a growth mindset always going onwards and upwards. Their, brain is, their brains are growing more every time they make a mistake. So this is why it's so important to believe in yourself. This is important for students in maths classrooms. It's also important for teachers. Uh, and other people doing challenging jobs. We know that teaching is one of the most challenging and the most rewarding job, jobs. And we have to go into difficult situations. And I think what this tells us is when we go into tricky situations and hard situations and we think to ourselves, I know I can do this. But then we mess up or fail, our brain will react more positively than if we go into those situations thinking, I don't think I can do this. That's how important it is to believe in yourself as a student, as a teacher, anybody. So I question why do we have to have these damaging dichotomies of somebody's smart or not, somebody's gifted or not. Everybody is on a growth journey. And some really stunning evidence showed us the damage of some of these labels. It was conducted um, by a group of researchers published in Science, which is the premier journal. Um, in the US and what they did was they asked university professors how much do you believe in the idea of the gift and they found something incredible they found that the more the professors believed in the idea of a gift the fewer women and the fewer students of color were in their field and these graphs show you the results and the x-axis shows us how much professors believed in the idea of a gift and the y-axis shows us the proportion of women in the field and you may notice that maths is right out there, more maths professors. The top graph is STEM subjects. More maths professors than any other STEM professors believe that you have to have a gift to be successful. Strangely, the philosophy professors also believe you have to have a gift to be successful. If you look at the other end of the STEM graph, you'll see the neuroscientists. They know there's no such thing as a gift, so they don't believe in it. But we get a sense here of how damaging these ideas are, that only some students can make it, and who it really harms. And this gives us another sense of that. So we have just discovered that one of the most commonly, the, the most commonly Googled word after is my two-year-old son on Google, the most common word that comes after that is gifted. And this, is my son gifted is Googled two and a half as many times as the question is my daughter gifted. That tells us the gendered nature of these words. They're not only damaging and inaccurate, they're heavily gendered and racialized. This is another interesting one. Um, students on ratemyprofessor.com are three times as likely to call male rather than female professors geniuses. So these words that we have, and they're particularly strong in mathematics, they're inaccurate, but they're also gendered and racialized. And mathematics, sadly to me, is the subject that has been m really most harmed by these elitist notions and ideas that only some people can be successful. And it's really important that we get rid of those ideas.